statement by the Minister for Health. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to make a statement on the support provided to those infected with hepatitis C and or HIV via contaminated blood. On the 14th of October, the UK Government announced that it would review the support available to those who have been infected with hepatitis C and or HIV by NHS supplied blood transfusions or blood products. The Secretary of State for Health announced the review's findings on the afternoon of the 10th of January. I received a copy of that report for the first time that day, just three hours before publication. I wrote to the Secretary of State for Health on the 9th of February expressing my concerns about this. My counterpart in Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, MSP, has written to the Secretary of State for Health to express similar concerns, and the Minister for Health, Social Services and Public Safety in Northern Ireland has also sent a letter on the 11th of February. I have now had the opportunity to consider the review's findings and to consult with affected groups. I have decided, with certain exceptions, to implement the review's recommendations in Wales. I consider it would have been inequitable not to implement a comparable package of measures which match those in England and Scotland to support those affected in Wales. It is difficult to estimate the exact cost of the package, but I believe the new arrangements could provide about £6 million worth of additional support over the course of the next Assembly term. The package of measures to be implemented is as follows. A new annual payment of 12,800 will be introduced for each living person infected with hepatitis C from contaminated blood and who have developed serious liver disease. This is the same as amount as that received by those who are infected by HIV. Individuals being infected with HIV and who also have severe liver disease as a result of their hepatitis C infection will receive two flat rate annual payments of 12,800 in respect of each infection. All fast rate recurrent payments will be backdated to the 10th of January 2011. There will be a further lump sum payment of 25,000 for those with serious liver disease, increasing the amount of stage 2 Skipton fund payments from 25,000 to 50,000. This will apply retrospectively, so if a person has already received an initial stage 2 payment of 25,000, they will now get another 25,000 pound lump sum within the portal to total to 50,000. Patients who developed hepatitis C-related B-cell non-Hodgkinson's lymphoma will become eligible for Skipton Fund Stage 2 payment, as well as the additional lump sum of 25K for Skipton Fund Stage 2 payments. All annual payments that are made, both to those, those so infected with HIV and to those infected with hepatitis C who have serious liver disease, will be operated annually in line with the Consumer Prices Index to keep pace with living costs. At present, no payments can be made to those infected with hepatitis C who passed away before the Skipton Fund was established. In England, the Secretary of State for Health announced that until the end of March 2011, there would be a window of opportunity in which a, pos a posthumous claim of up to 70,000 can be registered on behalf of those infected with hepatitis C who died before the 29th of August 2003. I decided to implement these arrangements for bereaved families, but not to introduce a registration deadline for prospective claimants from Wales. These new payments will go to the individual's estate and should help more families get the support they deserve. Over and above these changes, I intend to ensure that guidance and, where relevant, regulations are amended to reflect which ex-gratia payments are exempt from meat testing for social care. Officials will work with the Skipton Fund and various patient groups to publicise these new payments to those who may benefit. In a statement on the 10th of January, the Secretary of State for Health announced that a discretionary fund would be established in England to provide access to additional discretionary payments targeted those in greatest need for those infected with hepatitis C from contaminated blood and their dependents, including the dependents of those who have since died. This is similar to current arrangements established for those with HIV. These payments will be available for those at all stages of their illness based on individual circumstances. Whilst I agree that access to a discretionary fund should apply in Wales, I believe the management of a discretionary fund is an important issue. Ensuring equity of access to such funds is notoriously difficult. I have therefore sought clarification from the Secretary of State for Health about how this fund will be fairly accessed and for details on the criteria for claiming from the fund. I have serious concerns that the financial assistance available to people infected by chronic hepatitis C but who do not reach the criteria for stage school Skipton Fund payment is an underestimate of the impact of the disease can have on those with chronic hepatitis C. 
I consider the lack of additional support for these individuals to be a significant omission in the review's recommendations, and I have expressed these concerns to the Secretary of State for Health. There are two aspects of the review which are being handled differently in Wales. The changes to prescription season tickets will obviously not apply in Wales as charges here have been abolished. The proposal for additional access to counselling services for those affected by contaminated blood will be considered as part of a review of current service provision for those with haemophilia in Wales. NHS services for patients with haemophilia are currently provided from three centres in Wales, a comprehensive care haemophilia centre in Cardiff and two smaller haemophilia centres in Swansea and Bangor. I recognise that in some parts of Wales, the current level of service provision and support for people affected by haemophilia may fall below expectations. I am aware that local health boards, through their collective work on the Welsh Health Specialised Services Committee, are undertaking a number of measures to address these issues. I have asked Dr Chris Jones, Medical Director of NHS Wales, to establish a ministerial task and finish group to consider service provision for this group and to make recommendations. The task and finish group will also address issues surrounding access to therapy services. I recently agreed 1.37 million funding for year two of the implementation of the Bloodborne Viral Hepatitis Action Plan. As part of the funding allocated for year one of the Action Plan, two health boards, Abertawe Bromoganug and Cardiff in the Vale are now intended to purchase fibro scanners which offer a painless and non-invasive test for diagnosis of liver disease. I would like to see the results from fibro scan tests used as an alternative to the current evidence required for prospective Skipton Fund Stage 2 claims. I have written to the Secretary of State of Health to ask him to ensure the eligible the criteria for Skipton Fund Stage 2 payments is amended to emphasise the fibro scan results may be used as an alternative to liver biopsies and blood tests. I recognise that my response to the recommendations is unlikely to satisfy all concerns and wishes of those individuals that have been affected by contaminated blood. I am, however, committed to maintain a dialogue with the representatives of the affected groups to continue to improve service provision and to ensure that we all work together to address the significant public health issues posed by bloodborne viruses in Wales. Thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, Nick Ramsey, the Assembly Member for Monmouth. Thank you for that warm introduction, uh, President Officer. Oh. Um, can I um, welcome this? I'm touched. Can I uh, well, well, welcome this, uh, res uh, this response today, statement from, important statement from uh, the Health Minister? And can I also say that I think the uh, Minister's uh, decision to implement the review's recommendations is uh, clearly uh, the correct one? I think, uh, as uh, the uh, Health Minister said, it would have been uh, inequitable uh, not to implement a comparable package uh, as across uh, the border. Um, this commitment was certainly necessary to give reassurance to those people uh, who have been, um, uh, have been unfortunately infected with hepatitis C uh, from contaminated blood uh, over that certain period of time uh, when the problem uh, was in evidence. I do have a couple of questions for the Minister on the, uh, on the back of this statement. Uh, first of all, uh, you say uh, early on in, in, in your statement that it's difficult to estimate the exact cost of the package, and you say that it could provide about £6 million. Uh, why can't you be more exact about this? There may well be good reasons for that, but could you give us a little a bit of, uh, uh, of, of clarity as to the amount? Uh, I mean, could it be potentially uh, significantly uh, less than that, or are we looking at uh, a figure of £6 million? S uh, secondly, the concerns, the concerns which you rightly raised about those who passed away before the Skipton Fund was established. Uh, you've said that you've taken the decision not to roll out a registration deadline for prospective claimants. I wonder whether you could uh, explain a little bit more about your decision uh, not to have that registration uh, deadline. Have you also made, I presume you've made an, esti an estimate of the number of claimants uh, or, or a rough guide to the number of claimants you would anticipate uh, or the families, the estate of those claimants, uh, of, those vi of those victims uh, of this. I assume you've made an estimate of the number of claimants you would expect to fit, it, fit into that uh, um, category. I think you're quite right to say that ensuring equity uh, in terms of the discretionary funds, that particular aspect uh, of this, is difficult. Uh, clearly, it needs to be equitable. 
So could you tell us what measures you're putting in place to try, to try and achieve equity? Because I think uh, that uh, we would all want to see that, and certainly uh, the claimants uh, need to see equity who would be eligible for that discretionary fund. You've spoken about the local health boards, and you said that the uh, measures were being taken uh, with respect uh, to this fund, uh, but there's no detail about the types of measures. Uh, I'd certainly like to know a, a lot more about what the local health boards are doing on the ground to see that, uh, that equity in the fund is, is achievable. Uh, and finally, uh, presiding officer, uh, the fiber scan um, the fibre scan part of your statement, which um, I've only had a short time to look at, to be honest, um, but on the face of it, that does seem to be um, a very good uh, innovation. Uh, certainly, if it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, bad, it's, it's, it's difficult enough for people um, suffering uh, from liver disease and, and, and suffering who have suffered over the years because of mistakes which were, which were made in the past before they were sorted out. Uh, it's difficult enough without having invasive surgery to try and ascertain exactly the scale of, of, of liver problems. So uh, on the face of it, that's good. And I understand you are in discussions with the Secretary of State in England, um, in, in, in the UK, about this. So I wonder whether you could um, keep us uh, as a plenary uh, up to date to that. Um, th thank you, Presiding Officer, the uh, excellent Assembly Member for Montgomery, sir. Mary <laughs> Thank you very much, and thank you for your contribution. On the issue of the fibro scanners, that's the issue the patients raise with me most, that is the most non-invasive way of dealing with issues. So I think it is important, and when we look at services, that we do provide the necessary equipment. And that's directly as a result of the time taken out that I've taken to actually discuss with patients, groups, and clinicians the importance of how we take this work forward. I have to say with you that it is quite important that we do look at equity, and equity was at the forefront in terms, I think, of my response to to this. Um, in terms of the figures, we've looked at what figures we have available, but of course people might during the period move to stage two and be eligible for payments. We're not sure because there are all these issues around Skipton, so I can't be absolutely accurate in that area. In terms of the registration, um, the time scale was announced in England for people to put in, I thought it was very short. I looked at whether I should just extend that time scale, then I thought to myself to be absolutely equitable and fair to individuals who might not actually know about the provisions that now been introduced, I needed to give a longer time scale. So it was actually to give fairness some, uh, there. In terms of local health boards, I think the fact that we've established a task and finish group now to look at some of the service issues will focus the attention of the local health boards into the areas of what they're required, what they're required to do. I'm particularly concerned as well about the access to physiotherapy for patients as well and their requirements there, and that's something that they can, cert they can certainly do within that area. On the discretionary fund, you're absolutely right, it is a question vector and I did want to have further discussions with the UK government about the management of that fund. It's not that I don't intend to have a fund, but it's how we can best deal with it. And I'd be certainly delighted to keep members updated on all these issues. Dale Lloyd. Josh Lewis. Um, well, can I uh, greatly welcome the uh, Minister's uh, statements this afternoon. This is tremendous news for people um, with haemophilia and others who've uh, suffered um, HIV, both HIV and hepatitis C as a result of contamination with uh, NHS supplied uh, blood products. And it ends a huge injustice going back over years uh, that the Minister will obviously be aware of with uh, people not just with haemophilia but others who've been contaminated um, in the past by blood transfusions. Um, members may recall a short debate I held on this topic in the very first assembly term um, and obviously it's been a long battle to get to where we are today. Now obviously the, the earlier provisions were, were based around HIV um, but it must not, not be forgotten that hepatitis C is a very significant and serious in fact uh, life-threatening illness and sometimes we forget that because we think that hepatitis in comparison with HIV is relatively mild. Can I assure members that hepatitis C is a serious uh, life-threatening illness and needs to be treated in that way. To that end, anyway, I, I welcome the Minister's announcements today, obviously just to summarise again, a new annual payment of 
£1,000 will be introduced for each living person infected with hepatitis C from contaminated blood. There's also going to be a further lump sum payment of £25,000 for those with serious liver disease, increasing the amount of the Stage 2 skipped and fund payments from £25,000 to £50,000 along the same lines as in other countries in these islands, and also patients who have developed hepatitis C-related B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma will also become eligible for a Skipton Fund Stage 2 payment. And all those annual payments uh, will be uprated annually in line with consumer price index to keep pace with living costs, which is also a very important consideration. Now, in terms of, of the, the one issue I would want to um, explore with the Minister, because I don't want to uh, um, go over the, the same ground that the, uh, the member for Monmouthshire has already trod, um, but in terms of um, your comments here about having serious concerns that the financial assistance available to people infected by chronic hepatitis C but who do not reach the criteria for Stage 2 skipped in fund payment is an underestimate of the impact. Can I fully support you in your efforts to get justice for those people who have hepatitis C, though at the moment not serious enough to... Uh, uh, end up um, you know, qualifying for the criteria for stage two skipped in fund payment because we mustn't forget, number one, as I've said already, hepatitis C is a significant life-threatening illness, but also these people have had it as a result of contamination by NHS blood products. Um, those two issues really, I think, regardless of the severity of the illness, really should make people um, you know, work ever harder to make sure also, those people, everybody with hepatitis C, reaches justice in terms of the financial assistance accorded to them. And finally, your comments about uh, fibro scanners are well made. Um, Dr. Gibbons will know that liver biopsies are fairly um, anxious times, both not just for the patients and painful, but also for the doctor doing them. Um, and any way round not having a liver biopsy is to be commended. And uh, can I commend? your approach in that as well, Minister. But most of all, commend this uh, very welcome uh, announcement today, which will be a source of great comfort in many households in Wales. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Dr Lloyd. I welcome your com comments, particularly about the fibro scan and, of course, the issues around liver biopsies that have been raised in me about patients, about their concern, but haven't undertaken. And they're concerned that they're the things that are taken into account for access to payment on stage two payments. So it is important, I think, we're raising, raising these wider issues. Can I say there is an issue, I think, about justice with this. And, can I, and I will put this on record now in my disappointment that my own government, when it was in power in Westminster, didn't actually deal with this issue. Because I think it should be dealt with in a far more equitable manner. And I have in correspondence with the Secretary of State asked whether he's prepared to consider once again across the UK the insurance scheme that's in place in the Republic of Ireland because patients groups have raised this particularly with me to say it's not actually about this cash when you get to stage two it's about the other things in life we all take for granted like life insurance cover and like if serious you know you have care of, you have serious um, um, if you have cancer or other serious things, that you can have things paid for. What happens to your holiday insurance and things like that? So the Irish did look in a very comprehensive, which was then a very expensive scheme. That is an area that I have raised um, with the UK government again. So I think at the end of the day, this has been a good start in terms of discussion. We have to look out at our services here. A lot of people will be pleased and delighted to receive the payments, but I've also had correspondence from me indicating from a lot of people, they don't feel that this, is, this, this, has gone, this has gone far enough. So I very much hope in the context of the next few years that when perhaps financial circumstances change in the UK, it might be something we can perhaps, we can perhaps look at again. Veronica German. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And clearly the, I and the Welsh Liberal Democrats also welcome uh, the statement that you've made today. Because clearly it's right that anybody suffering as a result of treatment they receive from the NHS should get as much support as possible. And it should have been a priority before, as, as the Minister has, uh, has alluded, and uh, when this was first discovered. And it, and it clearly must be a priority now. And, and we are pleased that uh, the Minister is, is matching and implementing the recommendations of, of the review into these matters that was announced in, in England, but I agree with, with her as well that really this should only be a start and that we do have to, we do have to address those inequities that, that she has just referred to, to there. 
and and i can understand why she has decided not to have a cut off date because clearly i think it is at the end of this month in england and people do need to have that opportunity and she has explained her reasonings behind that. regarding the ex gratia payments and being exempt from means testing for social care does that mean that you would intend all of those payments to be exempt and that they will not affect in any way any other payments that those people might already be receiving when you issue guidance on that matter? and the discretionary fund you say you are going to be having dialogue with the minister in london do you intend therefore to use the same criteria? i think that is what is implied within your statement but i just wanted to check that you want to use the same criteria as that in england. one issue about the counselling services i see that that is where we digress slightly and that they would have been using named counselling services within england to be able to deliver those services. the only thing that concerns me here that it is becoming part of this task and finish group is that maybe it is a longer time for those people to have to wait. so i would be grateful if you could give some indication as to how long you think the timescale of that task and finish group and meanwhile if there is somebody who desperately needs some counselling whether there are some interim measures that perhaps could be put in place. i will not repeat what has been said about fibroscan apart from that it is welcome. i was wondering about the payments particularly about the twelve thousand eight hundred presumably this will be paid in the same way as it has already been paid to people with hiv and how long would you envisage this would take for the system to get going if you like for these people to actually receive those backdated payments to january? and finally i welcome the minister's wish to engage with people with the affected groups because communication obviously is one of the things that in the past they were very critical of not particularly in wales but as a whole because they just didn't know what was happening and what was going on. and and also the fact that you you mentioned at the very end of your statement about public health issues posed by bloodborne viruses not necessarily to do with this manner of infection but those just generally public health in increasing people's awareness of the risk factors of a disease such as hepatitis c which di has already said has some you know severe effects on on people's health especially when it's not recognized at an early stage and perhaps you could uh, comment on that. Thank you. Um, can, I th can I thank Veronica German for her very positive comments and thank her for her support in terms of what I'm trying to do in, in, with regard to these payments. She makes some valid points, I think, about the counselling services and everything that needs to be looked at. But can I show we do have pa uh, patient representation on the task and finish group as well. And I'll certainly take on board the point she made. With regard to the payments and the issues around that, I will certainly take that up with officials to ensure that there's the appropriate time scale and there aren't inappropriate delays. Delays, delays, with delays for, for individuals. And can I say I did welcome very much her comments about supporting me on the cut-off date because I thought a cut-off date would be rather unfair because there's been a long-running issue and a lot of people have lost, lost their loved ones already and I think they want the time to consider about their applications and everything. Um, can, I, can I say as well that um, I obviously in terms of the discretionary fund, I, do want to, I don't want any... How should I put it? We need to look at the rules and we need to make sure they're consistent and we need to make sure they're right. So I think it's important that you have to have the, di the discu discussion on this. This is just in the interest of fairness and equity because I think it would very be, be very difficult with, with the schemes across the UK that we're making the same payments and we don't really want to do things perhaps differently on a discretionary fund as well. So that's the only reason that I did actually raise that point. On the general point you made, I think it's well, well made about the whole issue, I think, of blood-borne viral, viral hepatitis Titus action plan and some of those, 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 um, those, those issues in a far wider context because these are issues that we do think we do have to make people very much aware of. Jonathan Morgan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. Minister, could I uh, start by uh, saying how much I welcome the fact that you are implementing the uh, recommendations here in Wales? Uh, 
I have to say I'm slightly concerned that it has taken this long to get to this point. I know that on a number of occasions when both Jenny Randerson and I have raised this point in the chamber with the business minister uh, over a five or six week period, uh, we were told that there were a large number of issues that you wanted to uh, look at. However, bearing in mind that you have, um, with two exceptions, decided to implement the financial package uh, in Wales, uh, I think it is a pity that perhaps that financial package couldn't have been announced earlier. Um, and then some more information about the review that you're commissioning announced a bit later. I think for many people in Wales, it wasn't just the issue of the provision of services, particularly for those with haemophilia, and about whether or not um, uh, the Welsh uh, specialist health services along with the health boards were doing their job properly. For many people, it was about the financial package uh, of compensation that they felt they were entitled uh, to. So I would ask you, and uh, perhaps in, in, uh, in the spirit in which this uh, statement has been handled this afternoon, to perhaps reflect on how these matters could be dealt with in the future, that where uh, an issue of this does uh, arise and where there's an opportunity to uh, follow what is being done elsewhere in the UK, uh, that that announcement can be made a bit, a bit quicker uh, than this one, um, even though you did clearly want to con consider a number of other uh, issues. Now, you've said that one of those issues will be the additional access to counselling. I think you're right to want to, to look at that uh, and to include that as part of the uh, task and finish review. What I would ask is whether you can tell us how quickly that review will start, when it will finish, when it will report, and, and the scope that the review will actually take. Clearly, we want that to be as quickly as, uh, done as quickly as possible because there are large numbers of people in Wales who rely on these services, who want to know why those services aren't delivering at the moment and uh, what you think this review might actually uh, achieve. What I did find interesting in this context within your statement was that you did say that the, the health boards and the Welsh Health Specialist Services Committee or Specialised Services Committee were... Uh, looking or had been uh, undertaking work uh, to see what measures were needed to address the issues of, of service provision. I'm just wondering what deficiencies have been encountered that now require a task and finish group. I, I'm sorry if that uh, is not something you're able to tell us about this afternoon, but the way in which the statement's written suggests that they've encountered problems or they're not doing the work that you anticipated that they would do, and as a result of that, there is a need for a further review, because clearly we would have expected uh, the health boards uh, and the specialised services committee to have resolved these matters, um, as I suspect they've been looking at them for some time. So I'm just wondering if you can elaborate further on what that review will be, how quickly it will take place, and what we anticipate uh, coming out of it. Uh, thank you very much for your comments, Jonathan, and I'm well aware of your interests and the interests of other members in this particular issue. It is interesting that I've been lobbied about the payments issues, but I've also people have written to me saying they're quite right that I look at holistically not just the payments issues, but the whole service. So it is a judgment call. You would not agree with my judgment, but I will definitely reflect on your comments in the spirit that they were made today. Um, can I say in terms, in terms of my, my review... I was very much taken in my discussions that I wanted to see greater coordination and a role for the centre in terms of how services could be delivered across Wales. I felt that, of course, I had the LHBs with their individual responsibilities. We've got these specialist services within the centre. But I thought it was quite important for government to have a role. The medical director reports, of course, directly to the minister, bringing together the various parties. And, of course, what's important about this is I will be bringing, of course, the voluntary sector in and patient representatives to ensure that the very real day-to-day -day issues are actually addressed in terms of what services are required. I don't like to say this with two doctors present in the chamber, not just some of the medical issues, but some of the very practical issues that impact on people, which I think are enormously important in this agenda. So that's the reason for it. I have discussed with Dr. Chris Jones that the letter should be going and inviting out participants now within the immediate time. And I would suggest an appropriate time scale would to be reporting back at the first week after the assembly elections um, to any new minister of health and they can then do the appropriate report back to this assembly because the subject has been of great interest can I say with, with, with it within the assembly and I don't think that that's um, a difficult time skill for the work to be done in this particular area but they are going to have to look at wider issues therapy services for instance you know what physiotherapy services are available across Wales they like to use sometimes a specialist physio physiotherapist but you know particularly you know the 
the requirements they need. So it's the whole range of issues. But I think the discussion would be very well focused under the chair of Dr. Chris Jones, the medical director, who, of course, has been engaging at first hand with the representations, representatives of the organs. But if you wish to write to me further concerning this issue and require further information, I will be delighted to write to you and share the letter with Assembly members. Jenny Randleson, last question on the statement. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer, and I strongly welcome the Minister's statement this afternoon. And um, I will, um, I, I think that it's uh, a very important step forward, a big step forward for the, the sufferers uh, from these two dreadful diseases and their families. Um, it's, it's not the end of the road, I, I am sure. And uh, I think that there is still a lot more work to be done, but it is an important step forward. I've got three specific questions. Um, the first, um, you, you refer to the lack of a registration deadline for posthumous claims uh, for those who've suffered from hepatitis C. Um, can you give us some kind of uh, specific uh, numbers, uh, an estimate of those uh, those numbers of potential posthumous claims. I ask that question simply because it might actually, given the numbers are going to be relatively small, uh, be easier simply to contact the families concerned um, rather than uh, sort of advertising it in a way where some of the families may never actually see that advertisement. They might not be in contact with the campaigning organizations. So, uh, you know, it, it it's not a massive bureaucratic exercise, I think, in the case of Wales. It certainly would be a big exercise in England, um, but, it, but it, we're talking about relatively small numbers. Um, looking at the discretionary fund, and uh, I welcome, uh, in principle, um, the, the issues that you raise in relation to that. By implication, you're saying... Uh, that you may be prepared to provide payments to those with chronic hepatitis C but who have not reached stage two. And I very, if that is the case, I very strongly welcome that, Minister, because actually, as uh, previous speakers have said, and you yourself say, it is difficult uh, to identify where you go from stage one to stage two. And uh, I, I don't necessarily know that there's a day when that actually happens. It is a process. I believe, by which that happens. And it is, as Dyloid has said, a very debilitating disease. And I would urge you, Minister, to do anything you can to raise awareness within Wales of the seriousness of hep C in general and to make progress uh, with uh, measures to identify those who are suffering from hep C because it is a disease which lies dormant. People are unaware they have it for many years. And um, it's often an inheritance, um, not in the case of the people we're talking about here, but it's an inheritance from a lifestyle of previous generations that people tend to have forgotten about in many cases. And there is, um, there is an issue with identification. Um, I am in danger of digressing, Minister. I will return to this statement. Um, the importance of the counselling service is phenomenal. And uh, I note that you are, it's being dealt with by you as part of your review of the treatment of people uh, with haemophilia. I have concerns, Minister, about any delay in the provision of these services because people are dying by the month. And it, the, the, the counselling service is important. Um, finally, there's a, the Penrose inquiry in Scotland. Um, I wonder whether you have any plans to take that uh, way forward yourself. I've urged it in the past. I would urge it again because, you know, for many of the, the families and the patients concerned, uh, the issue is as fundamentally about... Uh, portioning blame and getting the apology uh, as fundamentally about that as it is about money and financial compensation. Well, I can understand exactly what you said on your final point because that's the message I've had very strongly from patients and others. It's to get, get to the bottom of all this, know what's happened and why and everything. 
I haven't given any consideration, active consideration to looking at that issue, but in view of you raised it, I will obviously do so. Can I say I share your concerns about the counselling issues as well? That's why I've indicated the timescales I have done today. But I will certainly discuss this further with my officials to see if there's anything we could do perhaps in the interim before we get to the development of the full issue on counselling services, because I agree with you, it's very important that people do have access to counselling services. I think your first point is very well made, actually, about the posthumous, about the issues, issues around, around this. The trouble is, it's, it's the proof that is required to indicate it had contaminated blood. But it's certainly something that I will look at in light of your contribution, if there's anything more that we can do, it, we can do in this area. Because you are right, probably in the context of Wales, numbers will be, will be, will be relatively small. On the discretionary fund, I am thinking about the discretionary fund. Of course, I also do have to think of the resources that will be available from the Welsh Assembly Government during that, during that period. But, but also as well, in terms of the discretionary fund, I'm well aware of people, as you say, something doesn't change in one day that you become stage two. And there are all sorts of issues with people about the difficulties they, they can't even go to work. They can't provide for their families and the way they're living their lives, which I do think have to be looked up. So if members forgive me, I will take a bit of time to look at these issues around the discretionary fund, but we'll try and update members before we go into our election period with any further information I will be able to share. Thank you, Minister, until we hear from you next on the regulations later this afternoon. Thank you.